Hello there, this is Emma. I hope that you're doing well. In this video, I shall be applying this makeup you see here. It's been a long time coming, so I hope that you enjoy it. I have no makeup on at the moment, apart from tiniest bit of mascara so you're seeing me for the first time I think on this channel with no makeup on <laughs> so I have all my bits and bobs And before I start with my face, I like to apply some moisturising cream to my hands and my arms too. This is a, a Sea Bookthorn moisturising lotion. I really like I don't like to apply makeup with dry hands for some reason so I'll make sure that my skin is nice And I will also just pop on some lip balm just so that. Okay. So I don't bother with much else underneath my foundation. I will tend to um, use a serum and a moisturiser, but that's already done today. So I shall add my straight away. Okay. I don't use a primer. I know lots of people do, but I just have never got into all of that stuff. So, I use quite a light foundation. And sometimes I mix different colours depending on what I have in my makeup box at any one time. You may know that I updated my makeup just recently and I got rid of a few things so that I could have a lot of cruelty free stuff. So you probably know 
the brands I'm using, so I won't go into everything. Um, but just as an example, on the table in front of me, I have lots of Lizelle and ELF or ELF, as you might call it lips and face, some Marks and Spencers, which is in the UK, and I think that's about it. Okay, so I have my foundation here, and a stipple brush. Sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I use um, a sponge, but just lately I've been using my stipple brush. Okay, so I'm left handed. So hopefully you can see me applying most of this makeup as we go along. I know that stippling is meant to be just like this, but I just go around in circles. Under the eyes, trying not to poke myself in the eye <laughs> with the brush, like I just did. And taking care as well to work into the ear because we don't want to have a line there or even a line here so it's good to blend take some more from my hand and go the forehead for this video I may look up there and that's me looking into the viewfinder to check that you can see everything And I will go on to my eyelids as well. I don't use a base for my eye makeup, so this will act as a base for that too. I'm quite happy to um, use one product for as many things as possible. I also don't have, at the moment, concealer. I may purchase one at some point, but if I need to cover up any blemishes or any marks, then I'll just do this, like that, and add some extra. Occasionally I shall get some little hairs come down, so I'll pop, pop those back. But 
make sure I go into all the crevices I think most of us are quite fast when we pop on our makeup so sometimes when I'm doing it myself I remind myself to slow down because I really enjoy applying makeup it's really relaxing for me I think makeup application is quite special because we are enhancing ourselves, enhancing our looks and being creative with our look but it's also a time to look at yourself and spend some time looking and being comfortable with yourself as well so there's more to just changing the way that you look it's a bit of a ritual I think so anyway there so that's all of it so as you can see it's a little bit lighter than my um, skin tone or than parts of my skin I've kind of picked up on the lighter areas and added that all over my face whenever I matched up for foundations it's always a really light colour even when I have a tan and they tend to be the more yellowy tones for me I think okay so that's my foundation and now I don't know why but after I've done this I always like to pat it down I'm not sure if this makes any difference whatsoever or it could actually make things worse because I'm probably taking off some of it onto my fingers but I just like to do it sometimes some of the foundations can be a little bit um, powdery or drying and I feel like if I'm pressing it into my skin and my oils will mix up with it somehow maybe <laughs> I'm not sure but I do it anyway and I like to do it so there. press 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 it in like so okay right I also now and again just spray some oils or perfumes as I go along just to freshen myself up and I have this one with me now it's quite a citrusy natural perfume made with essential oils this one has verbena in it amongst other things I actually used this and a couple of others I have on the lo-fi video selling perfume so you may have seen this before my hair to the way and on to my wrist put it there It 
wakes me up and keeps me going. So, just before I move on to the next thing, I will point out that I normally bring the foundation right the way down my neck. I know I didn't just now. I brought it to just here. But normally I would move my hair out of the way and even do it top of my chest and along my collarbone as well sometimes, depending on what I'm wearing, just to blend, bring it down a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I shall be doing is, wait for it, a little bit, just a bit of contouring around here and around there. That's because I do it for my videos now with the lighting I use. I just find that it adds a little bit more definition to my face and if it's just another excuse to spend more time doing my makeup So I have some bronzer, which I use. I know you can buy separate things, products for contouring, but I shall just use a bronzer. And it's the same bronzer I would use in the daytime as well. a little bit on here and what I would do is do a line here just underneath my cheekbone up towards my ear and another one here So, and another one down my nose, and around the chin, and across the top here too. I think maybe I should point out at this point, point out at this point, <laughs> that I am in no way an expert at makeup. I just play around and I have seen a few YouTube videos which have helped me. But I just play around and go with whatever I think is working for me at the time. And I've received tips as well in the comments that I read. So I've learned quite a bit since making ASMR videos. It's amazing what making videos does to um, bring you to be more self-aware and see things about yourself that you wouldn't have necessarily noticed before. I do different things with my eyebrows now that I didn't do before because I just didn't really notice them. I let them grow the way that they always grew and just thought that that's how they should look because that's how they naturally grow and didn't think too much about it. And then I wanted an arch, which I'd never had. I thought maybe I could have one. So I went to see a lady who put some semi-permanent makeup just 
up here and defined them for me and it's probably one of the best things I've ever ever done I'm so glad I did it because it just changed my whole um, look here and I really like it they were really really thin before they just grew that way and people thought that I just um, plucked them to be really skinny but I didn't that's just how they were there so now I look really funny with lines everywhere and I'm going to blend that don't worry here I have a little blusher brush angled I'm going to pop some blush out on my cheeks and this is a little colour I got from ELF it's quite good, it's called Jet Setter and I think it's quite nice, it's a dusty rose pink suits me okay I think I hope so I just pop that quite lightly I say lightly it looks heavy but never mind um, just up I try not to do it too low if I, I think if I do it a little bit higher it will raise my cheekbones a little bit more maybe doesn't matter if I make a mistake I can always blend it out and the good thing about making videos and using a light is that if you overdo it a little bit the light tends to wash it all out anyway so it's not too And my blending brush is here. I use this one. And what I do is I blend this line here up to there, and then I blend the edge here. Like so, pulling a funny face. I'm quite aware that the camera's on me, so I'm not pulling the faces I would normally pull. <laughs> like that. I'm one of those people who. look really weird when they're putting on their makeup normally <laughs> so as you can see the line isn't there any longer it's just kind of blended up like so I have to be careful here not to blend too much because I shall actually just blend it away so I'm just really dragging the line the line here and blending it into the face there and also I like to just do that too because I have that hairline that goes like this so I usually put my hair down here like I'll blend it up anyway
Okay. So that's this bit here done. This bit and this bit. Now I shall do this side of my nose just there. On the end. And then this side. Like so. Too much. There. Okay, so that would be my foundation and some bronzer for a little bit of contour and my rosy cheeks. sort of evened out my skin tone a little bit and covered up any sort of blemishes I might have. It's quite um, shiny and dewy and that's not just down to the foundation but um, it's down to the serum I use and the moisturiser. And just lately I tried a new brand called uh, Nourish, which is made in the UK. Uh, I, I still use the Mad Hippie stuff, um, but it is sometimes difficult for me to order online with being in the UK. So I thought I'd just try a UK brand, which I did, and um, it's really nice, it's really good actually. It's making my skin quite shiny, which isn't such a bad thing. So I'll see how I get on with it, and I've been mixing it with the Mad Hippie. It's nice to have a few different things to use and to alternate, especially when they're filled with lots of goodies for your skin, so you're getting lots of nourishment. Of course, you should be nourishing yourself inside, and then that comes out in your skin too. So, that's that, and now I will just um, touch up my eyebrows, and I bought this from ELF, and I say ELF because there are dots here, so I can't help it, but every time I say ELF, Someone says no, it's pronounced elf. So elf, e l f, elf. And it comes with this little brush here. I do have a bigger brush to use, but this one's quite good and it's handy because it's already in the box. So I'll just brush them. I cut them reg regularly because I have very, very long eyebrows. I also have one slightly lower than the other. And that's because when I was little, I had Bell's palsy, which means that half of my face was paralysed. I just woke up one morning as a child and couldn't smile. And, well, I could, but just one, one side I used to do that. I think it was that one. I forget which side it was now. But 
um, I had lots of heat therapy and physiotherapy and so I recovered pretty well but one side is lower than the other and one side smiles bigger than the other so I have a very asymmetrical face but it gets right so that's why one eyebrow is lower than the other and sometimes I try to cut it so that this one comes up higher but sometimes when I do that it looks really silly so I just carry on and So, let me try and show you. The, um, the brush is angled, like so, and I will use the point in the lower point of my eyebrow and drag up the colour and draw, oops, Draw a line there, and there, I'm not doing a very good job, it's difficult, but that's basically what I do. Just go over the shape, there. And I really like this stuff, this one is, um, it's in light, 81301 light. It has this kind of waxy colour on. This is a setting powder here, and that's a waxy colour. It's quite good because you can just drag it over your um, eyebrows, and the hair just stays. So you can drag the colour up this way, like that, or if you want to, you could use the brush on the end. And then just draw lines like so. I use my other hand for this one, and it's quite difficult. <laughs> to define them really, that's all. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing but it's quite difficult. There. I'm creating a shadow with my hand. Okay, and then I'll just use the brush again to shape them. Like so. There. I could probably do lots of other things to them, but I don't bother. Okay, so next thing would be, um, I'll shape my lips, so I have a little bit of lip balm here, I'll just rub it. Now, what did I have? There it is. Okay. 
Here is a lip liner and I bought this at Marks and Spencers. It's a limited collection from Marks and Spencers which is um, a shop here in England if you don't know it that sells everything. Makeup, clothes, um, food. It's a national institution I'd say been around forever and this is a really good lip liner because it's um, a nice nude colour so it allows me to uh, draw the shape of my lips and then I will add some colour on top of it. Um, this one is uh, it's called Loganberry and it's, um, it's got the Leaping Bunny on it. In fact, all of their Marks and Spencer's own makeup um, is Leaping Bunny certified. So, I'll just use it. And sometimes I might overdraw a little bit. Not a lot. Especially if I'm making a video and I'm going to be coming up close, I wouldn't overdraw too much because um, you would really see it and wonder what on earth I'm doing. Drawing on huge lips. So. I'm just using it to define the shape. So, and give myself a little cupid's bow just here. Some people call them twin peaks. It's the cupid's bow. Just there. So I've just gone on top of the line really, rather than over it. I'm going to bring the colour in too. There. I'd much rather use um a lip liner than a lipstick for some reason. I find that the, they're more pigmented and thicker and stay on longer. But you can see there it's a very light nude colour and I tend to wear a lot more orangey colour especially in a video, so I will be placing something on top of that soon. But that's that done. Next, next we have eyes and I have quite hooded eyes. Um, I always have had quite hooded eyes. Every age I've been they've been hooded um, but just lately I've noticed that they're quite puffy so I don't know why it may be the new moisturizer or serum I've been using although I don't plaster it all over my eyes but then maybe too much here I'm not sure so I'll keep an eye on that could be um, something I'm drinking or, I don't know, I'll keep an eye and see, keep an eye on the eye and see, and there's a little bit of mascara from the day underneath there, so I'll wipe that up first. I have some little cotton buds here. 
I used these in a recent video and I decided to show the box because I just love the name Pinocca. I bought these on a holiday in Portugal and uh, I just thought the name was really cute. I love to go around supermarkets in different countries and look at all the boxes, all the packaging and all the names of things. I probably get way too excited about that kind of thing. <laughs> way more than I really should. These things are so handy, not just for ear cleaning videos, but for makeup. So there's a little bit of mascara there, and I'll wipe that away very gently. I could probably just dip this in a little bit of water to help things along, but it's okay for now. I don't want to wipe away too much of my foundation because I'll end up with white streaks under my eyes which wouldn't be great okay so moving on to eyes I recently went to my cousin's wedding and I had uh, seen a tutorial for makeup with hooded eyes so I tried it and really liked it there I'll do that now as well because I remember it but to be totally honest it probably isn't too much different from the makeup I normally wear in videos it's just for me I feel like I'm doing something new <laughs> we shall see so this is a palette I have from Elf, Eyes, Lips and Face. I did buy a few palettes just recently and this is one of them. However, when I started to use them I realised that most of the colours in all of the palettes were sparkly colours and all of the hooded eye um, makeup tutorials I've seen say don't use sparkly colours but use matte colours which do work better so I'm going to have another look around and see if I can find a good matte palette I think there's one by the balm which looks quite good. Too Faced have them. They're really expensive though, so I shall have a little think. But there are a few matte ones here. And I found two colours in here suitable for this look. Okay. So the two colours I'm going to use in this palette are this one, which is a kind of beigey colour matte and this one here which is a brown colour I may feel adventurous and add something in later but we shall see <laughs> so let's find my little precision brush here So the first thing I'm going to do is find where I'm going to add my crease, I think. Don't quote me on any of this because I'm copying something I've seen. 
and if I just um, put my eyes down here I can see the amount of lid that's actually showing when I open my eyes. So if I just um, pop a line there, and I have really long eyelashes, that's for another video I shall explain why my eyelashes are so long. They've always been pretty long, but lately they're even longer, and there's something I've been taking, and I think it's down to that. So, there's a little line I've just drawn, like so, and what I'm going to do is bring that around here. I have this brush here, it's a Real Techniques, and it's pointed and small, very useful. I'm going to draw a line here, and bring it round. could bring it right down, not sure if I will just now, but there you go. I'll just do it like this for now. Okay, so I have a bit of a an arch there, and I'll do the same on this eye. I tend to do each step on both eyes one at a time just because I like to uh, remember what I'm doing and if I move on to the next thing I might forget on this side They're not exactly symmetrical, but never mind. All of this is going to be blended anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If there are any mistakes, they'll be blended out later. So two arches, like so. And I'll go back to that colour in a moment, but for now I'm going to go into the light colour, the light beigey colour on this eyeshadow brush and just pat it onto the movable lid and also slightly above and under the arch. Like so, you may notice that when I um, concentrate <laughs> some of my face on this side, can you see <laughs> I'm sort of pulling a weird face? That's because the nerves in my face or the muscles work quite strangely since I had my Bell's palsy. When I blink, this muscle moves up here. Not on this side though. So sometimes you'll see in a video that there'll be a little twitch here. Whenever I blink, I get a bit of a twitch and that's why. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I just pull funny faces sometimes. <laughs> so you can see I'm quite um, loading this on. Probably slow down now, but go to the other side. I 
don't know about you, but I usually find that I'm more skilled at one side than the other. They're not always the same sides, but um, one side, one eye will always look better than the other. So I'm mostly concentrating on these corners because I'm going to put something out here anyway. Something darker. And I, there's no point in loading a lot of the lighter colour here. Because the darker colour won't show as well. Over the top. There we are. And I'm just pressing it on as well rather than wiping it. Just that just works better with this particular brush. And I'll go back in with the darker. Draw that in again. Because I wiped some of it away. So now I'm going to, with the darker colour, move that around here. I'm going to pop it in this corner. Like so. Again, I would like to remind you that I am no makeup expert and most of this stuff is just made up so if you have any more effective ways of doing this then please let me know or refer me to any videos that you know because I will definitely have a look I know a lot more about makeup than I did when I first started this channel but there's so much to learn and I'm very interested in learning all about it there we are. looks a bit funny now but uh, as I said I will be blending it in Make sure I'm doing the same thing. This eye is much better than that one, but never mind. I'll just bring it up there like so. Same on this side. There we are. And just here is a round blending brush. I'm not sure this is from, I think I bought it in a set, a cheap set from somewhere, <laughs> but it's an old faithful and I'll use it to blend, 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 blend. I can sometimes if I just lift up that helps a little bit like this gosh I do look really funny <laughs> never mind there. 
blend, blend, blend. good to go in circles whilst blending as well but usually I just do this okay So that's a little bit lifted my eye slightly and drawn attention away from the actual fold there. Let's widen them a little bit. I'm sure there are other things I could do as well to make that look a bit more open, but never mind. That will do for now. Bit more brown here. Just because when you blend, you can rub away some of the pigment. And then we don't have as much definition there. What? I might just do now is in this corner go in with a little bit of dark there's a colour here in this corner there it's like a dark dark grey there it has a tiny bit of shine in it, but not too much. So, I'm going to just dab on a little bit in the corner. Just for a bit more definition there. Not too much. Next, we need a tiny bit of highlight, and this is another e.l.f. palette. This is the Baked Eyeshadows, there. and there's um, a white one here, or a creamy colour, it's quite shiny. But if I grab a little bit here on this, I can pop it in the corners there. To widen my eyes a little bit. Not too much. They're quite difficult to get onto the applicator, so you do need to press on a bit, like so. And I will just dab on a little bit here too, under my arch. Not a lot, because I don't really like the 
I like to be too much along the top, sometimes it can look really bright. And then this is a black eyeliner. It's um, one of those felt tip type eyeliners, a liquid one. Um, I do have a purple one. But I'm trying to get rid of it because I don't want to use the brand anymore. So just for this video I'm going to show you this one. And once I found a purple one which is really suitable then I shall be comfortable showing that one. I did buy one from ELF but it was just a really awful colour, it was really light and it wasn't suitable. So this is very thin, you can see, and I'm just using it very lightly along the lash line. For a very small amount of definition, And then with the eye open, bring it into the corner there. Like so. And the same on this side. Okay, and sometimes, if I remember, I'll add a little bit of very light brown, maybe this is a matte colour, maybe this one, not too much. I prefer to add a bit of orange, but I don't have an orange so I'll use this one. Just underneath there. Only a tiny bit. It just um, brings out the colour in my eyes a little bit, that's all. There we are, and finishes off the eye a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we finish off with the lips, we just need some more mascara. This is a Lizelle. not doing such a good job here. I'd probably um, bring my 
mirror much closer so I can really get in there and see what I'm doing. It's quite difficult as well when your eyes are a little bit hooded. You don't want to get the mascara on the lid there. It's very easy to. Maybe I'll do a better job on this side. to the bottom lashes like so Okay. And if I really wanted to, then I could add maybe some of these. I have some individual lashes here. I'm really not very good at all putting these on, but I did for my cousin's wedding. I took ages and um, just popped a couple in the corners here and that just gave a little bit of a lift to the eyelashes there, that was quite nice. And I use this glue here for those and some tweezers. I've worn strip lashes once in a video for the spongy video but never any other time, but once I get used to using the corner ones, I may use those because I really like I like it when the eyelashes are flicked up in the corners, it looks, it looks really sweet. So for my lipstick, lastly, I have one that I bought from Marks and Spencers again, and it's by Diego Della Palma. this in the sale. It's quite an expensive brand but it's cruelty free and I bought it. I think it was half price. I wouldn't have paid full price for it I don't think. But it's a nice colour and it's called um, Rosetto Opaco number 91. It's quite orangey. I wear this in most videos now. So I will place this over the top of the liner I used but it's very very thick so I won't drag it across I'll just tap it on like so and it's matte as well could probably brush this on. I might try that sometime. It's very thick and highly pigmented as well so I don't like to add too much I 
feel like if I add a lot then it will just become really messy. But the good thing about it is it doesn't come off. If I take a drink or That's it. We just add some in the corner. A little bit. So. Okay. So that's my makeup and then I would take my hair down. I usually just use these clips here. I have a few of these and I have some smaller ones as well. I have quite thick hair so I find them handy. And just bring it around like so. I washed it earlier today and wash and dry it and then I use my hair straighteners to curl so I straighten from here and then when I get to about here I will bring it round and curl the ends and those curls will stay in now for, for a few days um, because my hair is quite thick and um, I'd say a little bit dry not um, unhealthy sort of dry but dry in a way that it doesn't need washing very often and um, it um, holds curl pretty well. It's it's naturally very frizzy um, so I always have to use the hair straighteners. So that's it. That's what I do when I get ready to film a video or before I go out. As I said, I did this for my cousin's wedding the other day and um, I really liked it. Apart from I didn't use the same lipstick, I just used a nude. So I used the same lip liner and the lipstick, I used this one by Marks and Spencers again, it's autograph. This was a lot cheaper and it's called Buccal. Because we were having dinner and I just wanted to have a nude that I could just top up. So that's sort of, um, well, very similar to the lip liner, but it has a bit of shine to it. And I like these lipsticks because they have this magnetised lid. They feel good. So, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that. It's been a long time coming. I enjoyed doing it. And as I said, I'm no expert, so if you do have some tips for me, then please let me know. And I should be very grateful for them. Okay? So, you sleep well, and I'll see you at the next video.